All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Mr. Muscarello coming at you, and today we're going to take a look at example one of the ratio and root test, where we verify whether a series converges by using the ratio test. Now, what exactly is the ratio test? I'm glad you asked. The ratio test works only on series that have positive terms, which means if you have an alternating series, so some of your terms alternate signs, some are positive, some are negative, you're not going to use ratio test or if some of your terms are just plain old negative. I'm not going to use ratio test. So move along, pick another test. Now it's a test for absolute convergence and it's going to be used for series that converge rapidly and by rapidly what you want to look for are such things as factorial so you might see something like this an n factorial or exponentials where you might have something where your variable is going to be in the exponent. So if you see something like that or a factorial, that means you're probably going to want to use the ratio test. So let this series have non-zero terms and it's going to converge absolutely if when we take the limit, the absolute value of the limit as n goes to infinity, if it's less than 1. Now this fancy notation right here, this a sub n plus 1, that's always going to be your next term. So what you're going to do is anywhere in the formula that they give you for your series, you're just going to put an n plus 1 in for that. And then a sub n, that's going to be the original formula that they gave you. So this is going to be kind of messy, and we're going to have to use a little bit of algebra to work with this to kind of get it into a form that looks a little bit nicer for us to work with. But you'll see that in a minute. Now the second thing that we want to take a look at is if when we do this limit process, if we get either a value that's greater than 1, or if we get something that's infinity, then that means that the series is going to diverge. However, if we do this limit process and we end up getting 1, then eh, we've got no idea and we're going to have to do something else. So you can't use ratio test. You're going to have to move on to another test. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first example. Now we've got to verify that this series converges. So what you're going to do first Okay, we're going to rewrite this, and when we rewrite it, we're going to, going to kind of, because this is where the messy part gets in. So this piece right here, all of that, is the original formula. I just put an n plus 1 in anywhere there's an n. And then the denominator, so this long denominator, n squared plus 1 over n factorial, that's the original series. So that's the very first thing that we do when we start the limit process. So from there, once we've got that, the second thing that I like to do is just kind of rewrite this so that it's a little bit nicer. So this denominator right here, I just take that and move that and I change the whole thing to a multiplying problem. So when you do that, remember you have to flip the denominator. So you're going to have n factorial over n squared plus 1. Now once we've got this limit set up in a little bit something nicer to uh, work with algebraically, what we're going to do from here is just kind of say, all right, we're going to rewrite n plus 1 squared. We're going to actually distribute that. We're going to foil that out, if you will, or use the distributive property. And that'll give us this piece right here, this n squared plus 2n plus 1. And then don't forget the plus 1 right here. So make sure that you keep that in there. And when we combine all of that, we get n squared plus 2n plus 2. So that's what our numerator is going to be. And then we have n plus 1 times n factorial in the denominator. Now where did that come from is where a lot of people ask. So when you have n plus 1 factorial, remember you, if you start off with n, the term after it is going to be n plus 1 and the term after that is going to be n plus 2 and so on. The term before n of course would be n minus 1. So that's where our denominator, that's why we can change it since it's n plus 1 factorial. So this is where we started and then we're going to rewrite that so ju to just be n plus 1 times n, n factorial. And why do we do that? Because then our n factorials will cancel out, yo. So that's much, much nicer. Now from here, as we start kind of working through this, so let me give you a little bit more room here. So when we start looking at this, now we're going to go ahead and clean everything up a little bit more. When you have n plus 1 times n squared plus 1, so we're distributing right here, so we're taking this and we're, we're going to end up here with n cubed plus n squared plus n plus 1, all that in the denominator. Now if you remember your limit rules as n goes to infinity, you're only looking at the highest degrees of your exponent of each one of these. So here we've got n cubed in the denominator and only n squared 
in the numerator, which means then that your limit is going to approach zero, which of course we know is definitely less than one. Now since our limit's less than one, then that, what that tells us is that our series right here is going, since it's less than one, the series is going to converge absolutely by the ratio test. So when you write your conclusion, so you've shown the limit process, you come up with a value, in this case our value is zero, which is less than one, so we have to say that the limit is n goes to infinity, and it's okay if you write that like this, a sub n plus one over a sub n, because otherwise if we wrote it with that funky fraction over a fraction like we did in the beginning, that's just gross. So just write it like this, and make sure you state what it, you know, that it is less than one, then the series, in this case, blop, n squared plus one over n factorial, converges absolutely by the ratio test. So that is how you do this type of problem. So just to kind of recap real quickly, you're going to replace all your n's with n plus 1's to start off with as you go through the limit process. And then of course we'll have to take the reciprocal to clean it up and look at, make it look a little bit nicer and work with algebraically. And the second series of lines we expand everything and start to cancel some terms out. And then lastly we'll use what we know about limits to determine the value of that limit. And then we compare that value to 1 and make our conclusion. So that's it for this example. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next example. All right, peace out.